Okay, welcome to tonight's live tying uh, demonstration. Tonight we're tying uh, a little bass girdler, which we have available in one of our self tying kits from the website. Uh, we've had this one for, for quite a while, um, though we don't have a video, a tying video that matches it. So we thought that we would um, kill two birds with one stone, so to speak, and present this live. Uh, and then also use the, the recording uh, to match the product. Okay, so it's a really simple little um, gurgler fly, super effective on the bass. Um, so you won't really need too many materials for this. What I do like about it is that it's super simple. So I do use um, craft fur for the tail. Use some um, the rainies medium barred legs in the neon green it's a really nice bass color I actually use that that leg in a few a few patterns of my flies um, we have sight cast two-tone foam in the chartreuse and the and the black we have um, the spawn um, uv dubbing in the black uh, chartreuse green so that's really about it. And then we're going to tie that uh, pattern on a Gamagatsu SL, um, sorry, a Gamagatsu B10S in the size two, which I really like as a general, general bass pattern hook. It has a nice um, gape and shank length that you can create quite a few patterns with. And then for the tooling that you'll need tonight, um, you will need I do like to um, use a dubbing loop on this fly pattern. So a dubbing spinner, a brush for the dubbing, um, just a little, we only need a smidgen of wax just to help bond the body together, but we'll show you that. A fairly small pair of sharp scissors. Uh, there's only a couple of trimming cuts required in this one. And then to finish off the thread work at the front of the fly, we're going to coat it with a bit of UV resin. And um, you'll need your torch to be able to set that. Okay. And then of course your, of course your bobbin. So I've got that loaded with two 10 denier thread. Um, so when you're doing your phone work, that is the denier that I do prefer to use. So whatever brand you choose, as long as it's around that, that two 10 denier would be really beneficial. Okay, so what I've done is that I've put a a, um, a base of thread along that hook shank and I've stopped it just where the shank starts to turn to turn down, okay? Then I have already pre-cut uh, a little um, patch of craft fur. So I've pulled out um, the really short fibers and anything that was really long, you know, down this end, I've sort of pulled them out and repositioned them to maximize the, the usage of the materials. And then when I put this on, I want that to be, let's say a shank and half or shank and three quarters. So we're just gonna push that onto there. Um, scale up for cod easy enough? Oh uh, yeah, actually, yeah, you could. Uh, I would do it a little bit um, differently, I would have the fundamentals of the fly the same, but then I would actually put six mil foam over the top, uh, which we just brought into our range this week, and um, or two lay or two layers of three mil would be nice, and then obviously you know an appropriate hook, you know something like a uh, something like a um, a Kona. Uh, big game carnivore in a 5-0 makes a really nice cod gurgler hook. Just it has a nice J shape um, about it, good shank length, and and a uh, really nice um, gauge of wire that they use on that model. So that would be my that would be my pick. But yeah, absolutely you could you could easily scale this fly up or down. So and that's what I like about this gurgler. Uh, kind of pattern is that you can you can customize it to do you know what you need it to do you can color it the way you what the way that you want to you can change your hook configurations around and take it up and down for 
for your target species. Okay, so there's a little clump of craft fur there at the tail. And then with my rainy's legs, I'm just going to, I'm going to clip two off. Advance my thread a little bit. And with the legs, I just wrap them around the thread like so. And then run them down the side of the hook shank. Okay. Like that. Then we'll show, take our thread backwards to the start of that leg. So we're going to wrap it around the thread, position it on the side of the shank and secure it. Um, would marabou be too absorbent for the tail? Oh no, marabou is a really nice tailing material for gurglers as well, so you could you could definitely use marabou, marabou on it. I just kind of like, you know, I just kind of like the durability of, of this stuff and I like how, it's, I suppose it's similar, like it's similar to marabou. It just doesn't take much water movement to get those long fibres to sort of move around, particularly at rest. But yeah, you know, that's, you know, it's a feature of marabou as well. So it depends on, depends on what, on what you want to use at the tailing. For this one, I just prefer that craft for, but you know, go ahead. There's a thousand gurglers out there tied with, um, with a marabou um, sort of tail on it. Okay, next part is just to grab a piece of foam and I'm going to clip the, flat edge off into a triangle like so. Okay. I'm going to take my thread down so it's, let's say now we're working, you know, we're working this section here. I'm going to advance my thread to halfway along. And with that tapered point, I'm going to lock it in like so. And the reason why I taper it is that it just makes this process uh, so much, so much easier and um, seemingly more durable. Okay, and then we're going to bind down over this area here. With some, some nice firm wraps, you don't want your thread to be, if your thread's bubbling up underneath of your, of your next wrap, then the, the previous ones are, are too loose. So you really want this um, to be locked down in position so it doesn't uh, move around and twist around like so. Okay. And if you look underneath of the fly, I've taken that foam back to, where, to exactly where those legs start, just there. All right, if you can see that. So that's been, been bound right in to exactly where that tie-in of the tail and the tying of the side shank where the hooks are. Oh, sorry, where the legs are. All right. Okay, next I'm gonna create a dubbing loop. So I'm gonna need my dubbing ready. And so to create a dubbing loop, all I'm doing is I'm just taking this around my finger. And I'm gonna lock down the thread that was underneath of the um, underneath of the hook there. And with my wax, I'm just gonna touch that, just like so. You don't need to put a lot of wax onto this. All the wax does is helps hold the, the dubbing in place and, um, and just makes the, the body a bit more durable once it's all twisted together. Hopefully sure you can get this bit on film. So what I'm doing here, guys, is that I am feeding some dubbing in between of the two threads. So the thread goes from the bottom around my finger and around the top. And I'm putting the dubbing in side of that loop, so to speak. Put a little bit more down here towards my finger. And then what I do, you can just move that around a little bit. You can uh, manage the dubbing if it's, you know, it's a little bit sparse, just here, fill him in. Right, we should be right. 
And with my dubbing tool, oh sorry, with my dubbing twister tool, I'm gonna take the tension up on that, on that hook, on that thread. And then you can just mass, you can just massage that around and we're gonna give this a few twists like so. I feel like I'm working in the shade. Yeah. Yeah, off the camera. So <laughs> sorry about that. Yeah, it's a bit dark on this side tonight. Okay. So just like so. Okay. So you see that the thread is it's fairly taut. Um, the dubbing has all been uh, bound in there. The wax helps it bind. And then we're gonna take this forward, like so. So for the guys that were asking about, um, let's say a cod upscale, for this process here, I'd probably put in something like a two inch brush that's already pre-made. Um, and then that would save you having to do this process and it would fill out the body. It does fill out the body really nicely. That's actually how I tie my cod gurglers is with a two inch brush that's already pre-done. So. Alright, then we're right down at the front. We're going to tie that off just like so. So the thread's going underneath of the dubbing twister, like so. I'm going to clip that out. Okay. Pull back your dubbing. We're really just going to lock this in now, just with a plenty of thread wraps, but not too many, but keeping the platform nice and Nice, um, nice and even. Paulie says you don't brush the dubbing, dubbing loop out prior to wrapping. Not prior to wrapping, Paul. I do it, I do it post, to tell you the truth. So, with my dubbing tool, I then go and hit the, I go and hit the body, and start to drag out any trapped fibres from within, just like so. I tend to comb down. You'll see that I comb the, the stuff out of the top and use it to fill out some of the, the profile of the side of the fly. Okay, just like so. Then we're ready for some front legs. So we're gonna re repeat the process that we use for the rear legs. Thread to the front. Any other questions happening there? No. Nope. Not very quiet. Okay. Same process. Wrap the thread around the leg and tie it in uh, directly down the side of that little hook shank that you have left. Same deal, just like so. And if they've kicked up a little bit like that, you can you can just pull them around a little bit so that they're they're nice. Okay. Now you can see how much room, guys. I've left. I still have left in this area here. So um, I suppose I see it as a as a fairly common issue is that when people are tying flies, they start to get down to this area here of the hook, and then things start to become overcrowded or there's still pieces to be put in but there's you know the tire is running out of room so you can see that i've still left plenty of room to be able to fold the foam over and, and latch it down okay so it's up to you um, how much space that you like there but a little bit more space is uh, more beneficial than not enough space so I'm just going to hold that in position and lock it down. So what I've done with the foam is just push it back ever so slightly. So it's just in front of the, uh, the final bend of the hook. Okay. Wrap that down nice and tight. I'm going to pull that, pull the remaining front section forward and build up a little, a little well or a little dam. 
of thread just like so and what we want that dam of thread to do is actually hold uh, the front gurgler face roughly in position okay we'll clip that clip that off with a cut and then once we're happy with that we can you can use a wet finish tool for this obviously or I'll just roll them out with my fingers put in two Just like so, nice and secure. Make sure that you're happy with that. Right. Now the reason why I do have this extended piece left is from the toe point, I actually like the water going in a little bit further and hitting that foam um, hood and then pushing water forward. It's the same technique that I use on my disco shrimps. Um, it's the same technique that I use on most of my gurglers. So rather than having it tied in right here and then a face of foam, um, I actually just like that water pressure to be able to go in just a little bit, do a bit of a kick and then sort of bounce forward off that face. All right, so that's the reason why I leave space in this area through here. And then just a couple of trims. So we'll grab the front legs. Give them a, a clip and I think already I think I already clipped the tail legs but I just I just make sure that they're even so the fly's nice and balanced so it's not sort of going to sit wonky on one side give that a little bit of a another brush out at this point you can still play around with the legs to make sure that they're they're in the position that you want them to be if you have a look at that that fly from underneath uh, you should be able to see that the front and rear uh, legs are nice and splayed so you have that you know you have sort of a, a chunky kind of body as the profile a nice wafty tail um, and then you have those buggy looking legs just kicking out to the side so the fly doesn't really take a lot of uh, movement to to entice a reaction. Um, do you tie in weed guards? Um, I do on on our stock range of of um, gurglers. On some of the models, we do. Um, I when I do that, I always put the guard in first. So you know, bef just after I lay the base of thread. So you've got two options here. You could run a a single sprag down, which I really like, and then bend it back at this point, or you could run a hoop. So a piece of mono, a sorry, a piece of fluoro tied in with a loop and then bent, you know, sort of at 90 degrees or backwards. If you have a look at that, that spawn dub underneath of that light, that's what I like about this fly is that it just has so much UV reaction about it. So the legs have got a heap of it built in, but that dubbing is just yeah, it's sensational, especially for bass. Um, does the bend in the foam stopping just before the end of the hook help it keep hook point sitting lower in the water or just your recipe? Um, I probably should have explained that through the tie to tell you the truth. So as I was, if you took notice as to how I was working, I was keeping the bulk of the weight of the fly from the halfway shank um, from halfway down the shank backwards so when I was tying in say the tail and the legs and that first tapered part of the foam it was all from halfway back and that helps with adding a little bit of weight of material to the rear of the fly to get it to sit like that in the water so you really want when, when you're tying a bass fly i suppose the ultimate goal is to get get it to sit at about 45 degrees in the water so you know once you start moving your threads forward and using you know and using too much tie-in space um that's where it starts to that's where your flies start to level out but just keep it sent you know just keep it centered from you know from the middle backwards so to speak and that will definitely help 
Also why I like the size too and the um and the gauge of the wire that helps that to sit that nicely as well. So that's a good question. Very good question. And so that's that 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 kind of question off often gets overlooked. So yeah, it's a good one. All right. That's um it, guys. It's really simple. Um, bass gurgler, but like I say, well, as we've discussed, you can uh, you can upscale it, you can downscale it, you can change you know you can change the componentry of it. But you know that's a really nice gurgler platform that can be modified to suit the species that that you want to target. Change it up for the colours that are hot in your area. Um, this this is a particularly good colour around here, so. You see a lot of our bass flies are in this black and chartreuse. Um, works better than black and purple for us. So, which is a historically a really, really strong bass color, but around here, that color there seems to be the, seems to be the gun. Um, what's the best retrieve? Um, obviously casting it really close to structure, as close to structure as you can. Um, the person that inquired about guards that's another really good question. So if you're doing a lot of um, bassing and you're fishing heavy cover, I'd definitely put a guard on. You know, cast of the shaded pockets, you'd be able to easily throw this on a four weight. So most guys probably use a four or a six for their bass. So it's, it's easily um, castable on those weights. In terms of retrieve, Shan says, strip, strip, bump, bump. That's it, exactly. <laughs> Something like that. You know, obviously cast to the dark shaded corners or, you know, close to the structure and let it sit. But the retrieve is also, it's, um, you know, it depends on how the fish are going to respond each day, so to speak. So, yeah, bump, bump, pause is a really nice, you know, keep it simple kind of retrieve. Um, cast it in, let the, let the, um, Landing rings dissipate, maybe give it a little, you know, give it a sharp bump just to alert any fish in the area that there's something there. Let it pause, give it another one, you know, maybe a couple of quick skates, you know, to, to maybe instigate a, um, a reactionary kind of bite. It depends. Every day is different. Like I fished St. Clair the other day and the retrieve that I've done really well with over the last two years did not pull a fish so it was they wanted something that was aggressively moving in the water and a bigger fly you know so but it took me a while to work it out you know i worked a few banks and i i had nothing so you went back to the fly boxes got out something you know totally different a bit obscure um, to what I would normally fish and change the retrieve dramatically but got the reaction and got fish so that's fishing nice yeah yeah is that it pretty much we're good yeah so as long as this vid is good guys we're going to um, load this up tonight onto youtube well uh, hillbilly says tied in tan with a rabbit strip tail yeah we'll clean up on the cod yeah there you go Perfect. That yeah. sounds good. Yeah, upsize it. Yep, exactly. Yeah, so we'll put this clip up on YouTube and then we'll put it onto the product for the self-tying kit that's available for that one. That's the Bass Gurgler. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. Uh, we'll catch up with you very soon. See you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.